Welcome to MRI Anatomy, Upper Extremities. There are 115 questions in flashcards, true-false, multiple choice, and labeling. Information is credited to MRIQuiz.com, Quizlet, and Wikipedia. Isn't that cute? The dog is using the upper extremities. What are the four muscles of the rotator cuff? They are, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, and subscapularis. Often the mnemonic SITS, SITS, is used to help remember the muscles that make up the rotator cuff. Out of the four, what is the muscle that originates above the spine of the scapula and inserts on the greater tuberosity of the humerus? That is, supraspinatus. As you can see in the image. Supraspinatus functions are abducts or elevates the shoulder joint. It also works with the other rotator cuff muscles to stabilize the head of the humerus in the glenohumeral joint or shoulder joint. Where does the infraspinatus muscle originate and insert? It originates below the spine of the scapula in the infraspinatus fossa and inserts on the posterior aspect of the greater tuberosity of the humerus. The functions of the infraspinatus muscle are Externally rotates the shoulder joint. It also works with the other rotator cuff muscles to stabilize the head of the humerus in the glenohumeral joint or shoulder joint. Do you know the origin and insertion of teres minor muscle? Origin, lateral scapula border. Insertion, on the inferior aspect of the greater tuberosity of the humerus. The functions of the teres minor muscle are, externally rotates the shoulder joint, like the infraspinatus. It also works with the other rotator cuff muscles to stabilize the head of the humerus in the glenohumeral joint or shoulder joint. The subscapularis muscle originates on the anterior surface of the scapula, sitting directly over the ribs, and inserts on the wear tuberosity of the humerus. It inserts on the lesser tuberosity of the humerus. Subscapularis muscle works to depress the head of the humerus allowing it to move freely in the glenohumeral joint during elevation of the arm. It also works with the other rotator cuff muscles to stabilize the head of the humerus in the glenohumeral joint or shoulder joint. Out of the four muscles of the rotator cuff, which is torn frequently. Supraspinatus. As it passes below the acromion, the tear usually occurs at its point of insertion onto the humeral head at the greater tubercle. When imaging the shoulder, what plane scan plane is oriented parallel to the supraspinatus muscle? The coronal oblique scan plane is oriented parallel to the supraspinatus muscle and perpendicular to the glenoid fossa, utilizing the X-gradient combination to encode the coronal oblique scan plane. True or false? The SNR of the shoulder is largely dependent on the quality and type of coil used. True. Dedicated shoulder coils return a much higher and uniform signal than a surface coil. How and why is using a dedicated shoulder coil beneficial for the image? It increases in SNR. Thinner slices and finer matrices can be used to achieve good spatial resolution without increasing scan time. Can you label these two structures? A is the supraspinatus tendon. B is acromion. Let's try to name these. A is, the coracoid process. B, deltoid muscle. C, infraspinatus tendon. And D is, supraspinatus muscle. What about these? A, subscapularis muscle. B is head of the humerus. C is infraspinatus muscle. And D is clenoid. Shoulder is tested a lot, so please hang in there. Let's identify some more. A is anterior labrum. B biceps tendon. Long head. C is head of the humerus. 
ND is posterior labrum. What kind of study is this? This is the intraarticular MR arthrogram of the right shoulder. Sorry. More anatomy. Please label these structures. A is tear minor muscle. B infraspinatus muscle. C acromion. D deltoid muscle. More. A is the spine of the scapula. B, acromion again. C, infraspinatus tendon. And D is easy. Deltoid muscle. Just a few more images. A, spine of scapula. B. Glenoid C. Supraspinatus muscle D. Chromion E. Is. Supraspinatus tendon F. Greater tuberosity NG. Scapula only four names in this image. Let's try. A. Clavicle B. Acromioclavicular, a C joint C. Supraspinatus tendon Can you guess D? Biceps tendon What nerve innervates the deltoid muscles? Radial femoral, axillary, ulna, or brachial nerve? The answer is C. Axillary nerve. What nerve is compressed in carpal tunnel syndrome? Radial, median, axillary, ulna, or brachial? B. Median nerve. Want to take a break? Because there is more anatomy to come. Let's continue to learn these structures. A is clavicle B. Sternoclavicular joint C. Sternal notch D. Vertebral body E. Right lung Notice the black area. F. Scapula. NG. Acromyoclavicular joint. We are almost done with the shoulder. Last image. A is. Humeral head. B. Acromion. C is easy. Clavicle. D. Sternoclavicular joint. E. Sternum. And last one. F. Coracoid process. What is the best imaging plane to view the median nerve? Axial slice orientation, as in the picture. What is that? T2 weighted stir sagittal through left elbow to rule out biceps tendon tear. Note the additional FOV coverage distal to elbow joint, covering entirety of distal biceps tendon insertion into radial tuberosity. Now, identify the elbow structures. 
A is triceps muscle. B. Triceps tendon. C. Fatty tissue. Notice how bright that is? Fat is T1 is bright. D is olecranon. This picture is not bad, right? A is medial epicondyl. B is the ulna. Can you believe that how it looks? C. Lateral epicondyl. And D. The humerus. Just a few more. A. The humerus, again. B. Common flexor tendon. C is radial tuberosity and D radial head. This is a different view of the elbow. Please try to identify these. A is lateral epicondyl, B anconius muscle, C ulna. D. Medial epicondyl. This is the last picture of the elbow. Let's finish it. A. Triceps. B. Olecranon. C. Coronoid process. D. Trochlea. And E. Braculus. Done with elbow and shoulder. Do you know the wrist bones? Here is one mnemonic. So long to pinky. Here comes the thumb. Scaphoid, lunate, triketrum, pisiform. Hainate, capitate, trapezoid, and trapezium. Or you can use. To save lives, the physician helps create treatments. Here is the fun one. She looks too pretty. Try to catch her. You, now, are an expert in the wrist bones. Try to label these. A is Hainate. B is the Capitate. C. Trapezoid. D. Trapezium. Note that the trapezium is outside, and the trapezoid is inside, in any view. E is the median nerve. Remember carpal tunnel syndrome? F. Flexor tendons. Let's try the wrist bones in this view. A is base of metacarpal. B. Trapezoid. C. Capitate. The largest wrist bone. D. Scaphoid. E. The radius. F. The ulna. K. Lunate. G. Trichotrum. H. Hainate. J. Base of the fifth metacarpal. Last picture of the hand. A. Interphalangeal joint. B. Metacarpal phalangeal joint, MPJ. C. Head of metacarpal. D. Base of fifth metacarpal. E. Trichetrum. 
F is the radius. G. Capitate. H. Base of second metacarpal. J. Head of second proximal phalanx. And K. Middle of second middle phalanx. Now, you know the largest bone of the wrist, right? Yes. Capitate. You are absolutely correct. What bone fracture is one of the most common fractures of the wrist? Distal radius. The optimal imaging plane to demonstrate the carpal bones and the interosseous ligaments would be the what plane? Coronal plane. What is the disease name for a condition of osteomalacia in the lunate bone of the wrist? and a vascular necrosis with fragmentation and collapse of the lunate. It's called, Kainbeck's disease. Very important. You must know this one. These are, T1 weighted coronal, left, and proton density coronal with fat suppression, right, demonstrating Kainbeck's disease of the lunate bone, orange arrows. Where is the triangular fibrocartilage complex located? At the wrist. The optimal imaging plane for evaluation of a TFCC tear would be the what slice orientation? Coronal plane. When imaging the wrist in MRI, in order to achieve high spatial resolution, a small or big field of view would be used, in conjunction with a dedicated wrist or local surface coil. You use the small field of view. When imaging the extremities, what tablets could be used as a marker to delineate the area of interest for both radiologist and referring physician? Use vitamin E as the marker. What kind of image is this? This is a T1 weighted image, in coronal plane, demonstrating a brown tumor at the distal radius. What about this one? This is the proton density, in coronal view, with fat suppression. Demonstrating brown tumor of the distal radius. A 45-year-old male comes to the clinic with a history of pain with tingling and numbness in the right hand with thumb, index, and middle finger involvement that started two days ago while he was at work. The patient describes the pain as needles and pins. The discomfort gets exacerbated if he does repetitive computer work and gets mildly relieved with handshaking and change of positions. What is the diagnosis? Carpal tunnel syndrome. Median nerve compression. But, we need the MRI to be sure. Once again, thank you very much for watching. Please share this video with your classmates and others, and tell them to subscribe.